Hi, everyone. My name is Beth Sobolewski. I'm the Director of Admissions and Recruiting here at the Ford School. Thank you so much for taking time to come and meet with us today and to hear from our Graduate Career Services team. Um, they do a tremendous job for our students, so I'm really excited that they get a chance to talk with you about um, their work and, and um, the support that they provide for our students in our master's programs. So I want to introduce uh, Jennifer Nigemeyer, who's our Director of Graduate Career Services and Alumni Relations, as well as Peter Vasher, who's our Associate Director of Graduate Career Services. They're going to um, chat uh, up for a little bit, and then there will be time at the end to have questions. So um, feel free to as you think of them, drop those in the chat or we'll have time at the end as well. So I will turn it over to Jennifer and Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Beth. So welcome everyone. We're actually going to do this as an interview. Uh, Peter and I are gonna interview each other about our services and hopefully that will set the stage for you to ask some questions as well uh, as we um, get toward the midway point. Uh, so, as Beth mentioned, I'm Jennifer Nigmeyer, I'm the Director of Graduate Career Services and Alumni Relations, and uh, I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Peter, who's going to start off the interview today. Uh, we're really excited everyone's joined us. Uh, so, I'm Peter Vash, I'm the Associate Director of Graduate Career Services here at the Ford School of Public Policy, coming at you live from 735 South State Street, uh, right here at the corner of State Street and Hill. Uh, so to kick things off, uh, Jennifer, I hear the Ford School has intentionally invested in a robust career services and alumni relations team specifically for graduate students. So can you tell us a little bit more about the team and kind of give an overview? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Ford School does take its commitment to graduate career services really seriously, both for the MPAs and the MPPs and for PhD students. And uh, we have a team that includes a staff that work on employer relations side of things, establishing recruiting contacts and connections. We have staff that work on the counseling side, uh, providing one-on-one -on -one and group support. And, um, and then we also have an integrated approach where our leadership initiative is integrated into um, some of, into our office um, with, some shared responsibilities across staff, um, and as well as alumni relations being integrated into our office. We'll talk a little bit about that um, moving forward, but we talk about our service delivery in general as providing you with information, connections, strategy, and support. So that's information about the world of work. What can you do with a policy degree? We know sometimes students come to the program and they're career pivoting. Uh, I don't necessarily know the range of options that one could do with a policy degree. And so we, we definitely have programs and services that focus on connection or on, on that information. Um, but once folks do have a sense of what they wanna do, uh, connecting with those that do that work is really important. And so that's where the connections aspect of our office uh, really comes into play. So I think I will stop there and um, ask Peter maybe to unpack that a little bit, particularly about um, what's maybe unique about the Ford School in the, the ways in which we get to know our students in our, um, in our service delivery approaches. Yeah, absolutely. So I know uh, you can kind of see our other teammates and colleagues uh, on the screen right now. So we are, I think one thing that's very important in the Ford School is community. And that starts with getting to know one another. We are self-contained to one building uh, on the Ann Arbor campus. So we're one of the smallest schools on the Ann Arbor campus. So I think a really nice benefit of the Ford School too, is you're a part of the larger U of M community, um, but you really have the individual focus of community here at the Ford School uh, in Wild Hall kind of overall. And the ways that we get to know our students. So we get We'll be reaching out to you if you decide to come to the Ford School uh, in the summer of 22. So before you even come to campus, uh, we get to know you. Uh, so we start with programming over the summer before you come. Uh, every student has the opportunity to take, take a Gallup Strengths Finder. Uh, so we do a little bit of strengths work in the summer to kind of help inform and in your own um, values and your own strengths that you're bringing with you to the community. We know that 
people are coming back um, potentially to school after a number of years of work experience. Uh, so we just want to kind of help with that reflection piece as you're starting uh, on a master's or PhD program here at the Ford School. Uh, and then we get to know you individually. So we meet with every single student uh, that comes through the Ford School one-on-one -on -one to get to know your interests, where you want to go. Are you making a career pivot? Are you looking to move to California? Are you looking to move to India? What is it that, what is your why? Uh, and that's something we work individually with you on and we're accessible. So you know, we have 230 master students uh, at the Ford School. You can see our team that we have available. We're here, we're reaching out to you. Um, so really get to know those interests. And one thing we do is we meet with every student in August or September. Um, occasionally that goes into October, uh, depending on you know, midterms, uh, anything that the students may have, but really to kind of get to know those um, interests that you're bringing, what's your background, what are you hoping to accomplish here at the Ford School? And then it's really that full life cycle journey. If you're getting the MPP, we work with you on your internship search. Uh, if you're the MPA, you know, we'll work with you a little bit on the capstone too, but what are you doing here in your year or your two years to kind of set up that internship and then set up what comes beyond? And then everything that goes into that full life cycle of the career search will work with you on. Uh, we know that many of you are bringing robust experiences with you and bringing a lot of expertise with you um, to the Ford School. And we, we tap into that in the community too. Um, but we have a number of different workshops. We'll work individually. Um, we have one of our programs that maybe I'll let Jennifer talk a little bit about that we really enjoy is uh, internship and job search groups. So where we leverage the community and the expertise that you're bringing to. Um, I don't know if you wanna talk a little bit about that. Jennifer is one of our sure. options. Sure, so uh, we do uh, lots of individual one-on-one, -on -one, but we also think it's really important and we know students have found lots of value in this to have accountability with each other. And so we organize internship search groups in the fall. Uh, for students that want to get a head start. And uh, these are like mm, between eight and 10 students that commit to four or five weeks of one hour a week getting together to focus on um, aspects of your internship search. And often students decide they want to continue on with their accountability and they self-organize and, and uh, keep, keep meeting after the formal structure of the program is over. Um, we'll do those in the winter semester as well. We also will do job search groups for those that are second years or MPAs that want that type of uh, small group accountability and, um, and focus. And they've really been a strength of the office. Uh, lots of schools on, on, on Michigan's campus have replicated what we've been doing with these and, um, and many of our peer policy schools as well, because we have, we found them to be really successful uh, and really part of building that sense of cohort and community for the school. Yeah. And in addition to, to search groups too, we do, you know, we'll work one-on-one -on -one with students on, you know, interview prep, interview practice. Uh, we'll have different workshops. There's, uh, you know, Casey Sullins, our employer relations manager. We have a number of different employers that are coming virtually or to campus when public health guidance allows uh, to connect with you. Uh, so there are a number of different opportunities for connection that build upon that individual and group support uh, that you're going to get as a part of the community. Um, another really nice benefit too of kind of the GCS AR team uh, is the opportunity for every single student to get individual leadership coaching at the Ford School. Uh, if Jennifer, you wanna share a little bit more about the leadership initiative too. Yes, yeah, so I work very closely with Morella Hernandez, who's a faculty member um, new to the Ford School, who is the director of the Leadership Initiative. And part of the piece that I'm responsible for is for students that are on internship, we, through the, the wonderful uh, contributions of donors, we are able to provide each and every master's student with a leadership coach that is paired with you during the time of your internship. Um, and so it's an opportunity to really lean into um, how are you showing up at work? So not so much like, it's not the career counseling, it's about how am I growing as a leader? 
How am I showing up? What's my leadership presence? How am I modeling the way? What am I seeing about good leadership in the workplace? Um, and students found that really valuable. Uh, last year was the first year we opened it up to all of the MPPs on internship. And this semester we have just launched it for the Master of Public, Administ or Public Affairs students, um, where they're going to be paired with a leadership coach uh, concurrently with the time they're taking the, the, the core leadership course uh, that is taught by uh, Dr. Morella Hernandez. Um, and so we're super excited about it. And uh, the coaches absolutely love working with Ford School students. They have said it's their favorite clients um, and, and that the issues that students are bringing to coaching are really similar to what the CEOs that they work with bring to coaching. And so the fact that you have access to this so early on in your career, um, we really see it as a game changer in how um, it will help you advance your growth and development and your, your leadership development. So super excited about that offering. Yeah, so um, let's see, Peter, let me ask you a question now. We have, um, let's see, we've talked about strategic, I, if we talk about information connections and support, uh, as part of what we've offered. And we talked about the programming uh, and the individual one-on-one. -on -one. Can you talk about what we mean by helping students with the strategy side of their search? Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so as we had said earlier, definitely working uh, with each of you individually uh, to see what is the best choice for you. Uh, and we know, you know the experiences that you're bringing uh, are going to be varied. They're going to be different. And we, like I said, we leverage that, uh, but we kind of will work with you one-on-one -on -one to make strategic decisions as, as you like it. We're a resource here for you. And that can at times be pursuing opportunities um, that might be different from past experiences. So it's what is the why that you're here? What is the strategic choice you're going to make with your degree? Uh, so you're here, you're going to have academics uh, that are going to be challenging you and taking up time. But what else are you going to do strategically to connect um, with our large alumni base that's around the U.S., uh, around the world? What are the opportunities that you are going to be intentional um, in your own strategy to kind of explore different pathways? So that could be uh, connecting with an alum to do a mock interview. It could be going to an alumni office hour. Uh, but what are the ways that you want to uh, explore pathways uh, or sectors uh, while you are here at the Ford School? And in terms of your own strategy, we recognize that a number of our students might be exploring parallel pathways and that's absolutely okay we encourage that we want you to get perspectives from alums from employers so you can make a strategic choice in the last couple of days i've talked to students that are weighing multiple offers and we talked through the strategy of what is the right choice for you knowing you know and it might not be the one that pays you the most amount of money but what is the right fit for you in your career um, so we will have those individual one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, with students and kind of build a plan of during your time here at the Ford School, what is the right choices for you to explore or to make um, so you can get experiences. And some of that will be, I come from the private sector. I really would like to get a local government experience, but I also want to get exposure to the federal government. How can I do that? Okay, I'm going to work part-time. Uh, either for the city of Detroit or doing a project uh, with you know, a faculty member uh, with the Detroit Neighborhood Entrepreneurs Project so I can get some exposure uh, at the local level. And then my summer internship, I'm really going to focus on either being in D.C. or Chicago, and I really want to work for the Government Accountability Office. And we'll kind of talk through that strategy of, okay, how can I achieve those goals? What do I need to do during my time here uh, to make that happen? I'd say another strategy piece is we learn from and talk with you about your experiences. We've had students that will go off on a summer internship or get a capstone experience at the MPA level. And they're like, I am thankful that I have had this experience because it has validated that this is what I don't want to do. 
So I'm gonna look in a different direction and that's okay too. Uh, but that's a strategic conversation you can have with us. And it's one that we're certainly happy to have uh, with you as you're you know, figuring out what is it that you wanna do here and what is it that you want to do uh, next as well. And with that too, I mean, we definitely leverage our alum network. And Jennifer, I don't know if you wanna talk a little bit about how alumni relations is a part of our team uh, here yep. in Graduate Career Services. Yep, so um, about 10 years ago, we made a very deliberate choice to pull the alumni relations function, which generally in most schools is connected to development. Um, we, we pulled it physically out of that space and moved it onto what we call the second floor, which is where student services is, career services is. Um, and so that alumni, our alumni relations person would be very much involved in the life of the school and get to know students. Often alumni relations picks up after graduation that just doesn't seem like the right model. Like we, alumni relations is a, it's a continuum. And so we wanted our alumni relations folks to know our students from the get go. And um, that includes playing a role in connecting those of you that be, will be admitted into the Ford School. Uh, you will have the opportunity to be um, paired with an alum to ask questions, what we call our admissions ambassadors program. So, so alumni relations is very much embedded in the life of the school, both in terms of an admissions focus, uh, in terms of fundraising, our alumni board is very active. They, they actually raise funding for uh, internships. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, they're involved in increasing the visibility of the Ford School, whether they're, they're connecting us to potential speakers, uh, or they themselves are receiving awards and they're acknowledging that they're a graduate of the Ford School. Um, but the part that is most salient for Peter and I is the part that alums play in the career development of students. And that is from pieces of being employers themselves, right? So they graduate, they go work for a Deloitte and they come back as a recruiter or they're, they're working for uh, the US Department of Transportation and they know that they have some presidential management fellowship openings and they're connecting back and asking who are your finalists in, in this, um, this program that is sort of, sort of a fast track into the federal government. Um, and then they play a really important role in just career advising. Being, we do office hours with alumni where um, you can sign up for a half hour with an alum of interest to you. We make their bios available. And then in the winter semester, we do mock interviews with alums to help you prep for interviews that will be, that certainly will be happening as part of your internship and job search. Uh, and then we have a series of programs where we bring alums in more formally through 40 Fridays, which is an informal, like a coffee chat, um, but it's structured where we'll have two alums come in and just really field questions from students, share a little bit about their story. And then sometimes alums come in and just do uh, career conversations uh, or career conversations that are tied with recruiting for their specific organization. So. Uh, it would be, you would be hard pressed to graduate from the Ford School without having had some significant alumni interaction. Uh, and, and, and they're just like, they're giving back because people gave to them when they were students and that's the culture, right? It, we, it's built into the culture from the start. So um, yeah, and Peter, anything else we wanna say about alums? I guess that about their amazing careers and the, where they go and the impact that they have. Yeah, we can we can definitely uh, talk about that. Uh, our our alums are they're really making a policy impact uh, across you know the many different states, many different countries, uh, and it's they are very connected to us. Uh, you know, the Ford School is we talk about that community piece. Uh, you know, when they're coming back to attend an athletic event or something on campus. Uh, you know, they're, they're dropping by, like Jennifer said, uh, it's, it's a place that, you know, people want to return to and pay it forward uh, as they can. 
And they're doing that and their actual policy impact is in a variety of different places. So, but before I talk a little bit about the full time, I just want to mention a couple of things about um, internships is that's a great place to make an impact too for those that are potentially earning the MPP degree. Uh, and just super quickly, we then a number of different ways that students will get that kind of internship uh, experience. And there are a number of different employers that will intentionally uh, recruit at the Ford School. And we have Ford funded uh, internship opportunities for students too. So just of note in the last two summers, we've been in a pandemic and we've strategically worked with our students to ensure uh, an internship experience. That's either, you know, in 2020, that was 99% virtual in 21, uh, majority virtual. Um, but we did have uh, roughly a quarter that did go on and pursue in-person experiences because that's what the employer wanted. Um, so, and we will see what public health guidance allows for in the summer of 22, but one thing the Ford School remained committed to was uh, maintaining funding levels. So that's just one thing we want to note is we did not uh, diminish any kind of funding levels. So we provided funding um, to all students that requested it. Uh, so we have different levels of funding. Uh, we have Ford funded internships that are at the 7,500 or 8,500 level. Um, with a number of key employers, uh, whether that is uh, different organizations and units um, from around here, I can share a little list that we have here, uh, or you know, employer paid uh, internships certainly as well. So there's a number of different opportunities at the internship level to get kind of that experience as you're building um, to full time as well. And so this is kind of just showing um, levels of funding. About a third of our students are going to get employer paid internships, such as Government Accountability Office, uh, Deloitte, uh, GuideHouse, um, City of Chicago Mayor's Office, uh, any, any number of places. Uh, and then also we have different Ford funded uh, internships. These are some recent examples of some of our internships um, at the MPP level that students have had the opportunity to engage with. Um, certainly as well. And this is not exhaustive. Uh, you know, in any given summary of 100, 110 students on internship at 108 different organizations. So that impact is vast and varied. And again, it gets back to that strategy piece of what do you want to do and where do you want to go? And that, that global impact and is, is real. You know, the, the block M that I have behind me, you're going to see that when you're traveling, you probably already met someone who said go blue to you about five times too many, but we are proud and we're proud in the Ford School um, of where we're going and what we're doing. Uh, there's a few more employer connections, uh, but just getting to post-grad where students geographically are going. So we kind of have a historical top six um, in terms of specifics. So Michigan, uh, DC, uh, many different places internationally, California, Illinois, New York, and then any number of different uh, states represented across the US and then across the world too. Uh, so geographically, there are a number of different places. Yes, we're based in Ann Arbor, um, but we do have that reach and impact kind of across the U.S. Um, and the world, too. Uh, and this is the same case for internships that people are going to many different places um, and many different organizations. Uh, if you're a visual learner, such as myself, uh, sometimes I like maps to represent different things. So these are kind of by destination worldwide. Uh, it recently, in the last five years or so, where students have ended up on the international perspective. Uh, so top five being US, Japan, Indonesia, South Korea, and China. Uh, and then if we were to look at this domestically the last five years, you can kind of see, so the blue states there uh, are our top five in terms of numbers, um, just in terms of representation in the last couple of years too. So, and again, this is across sectors. So federal, local, state government, foreign governments, uh, international organizations, consulting, private sector, government relations, um, and a vast, vast range of different nonprofits. Students are making an impact in a number of different ways. Here, I wonder if you wanna share a little bit about uh, the Bonnet Fellowship and the Reeker Fellowship that both have applied policy impact components. Yeah. So we have two uh, of the fellowships that Jennifer just listed there. So the Bonnet Fellowship, which will have an upcoming application in March of 22 for those that are admitted to the Ford School. And that has a built-in uh, internship component to it. So 
our Bonnet Fellowship uh, is partnered with the City of Detroit Mayor's Office. So for those students, they receive uh, tuition support and scholarship um, for their academic pursuits. And then they also will receive a $10,000 stipend to pursue an internship with the Mayor's Office uh, in Detroit. So we have three fellows each summer uh, and that internship component is in a policy area of interest to you. So it varies in terms of what department it might be within the mayor's office in the city of Detroit, but it's a great opportunity. And our fellows have gone on to continue to work in the city of Detroit or in local government in other areas or in a variety of different spaces. So it's it's a nice network. As a part of that fellowship too, you uh, will join fellows who are at NYU and UCLA and become a part of that broader network. And then you can uh, have the opportunity to attend the US Conference of Mayors. The Reeker Fellowship is a six month long fellowship where you are directly on Capitol Hill in DC, working either in a Senate office or uh, a member's office in the House of Representative uh, doing policy work. And so that is an opportunity that's open to students in their second year um, of the MPP program. So after they've done some policy coursework, uh, you apply typically in the fall of a, your second year or depending on if you're a dual degree student. Uh, and then you will spend from January to early summer uh, in DC directly working on policy in the Senate or in the US House. So we have two, go ahead. Yeah, supporting a member of the Michigan delegation. Yes, sorry. It's focused on that. So yep. uh, for instance, this coming January, we will have two students on the Hill. One will be uh, supporting uh, the, the work of Senator Gary Peters, who is the chair of the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. And um, the second student will be on the House supporting the work of uh, Dan Kildy on his work on uh, House Ways and Means Committee. So two definitely positive uh, experiences. They're in both opportunities are very competitive, um, but nice experiences that are only open to Ford School students too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we said we'd take half the time and we did. Uh, and so we'd love to open it up for your questions. Um, Peter, I mean, uh, maybe we could take the spotlighting off so we can see everyone. And uh, feel free to raise your hand or to um, put your question in the chat, but we would love to hear your questions. Anything that wasn't clear, anything you want more clarity on, anything we didn't cover. Don't be shy. We're here. We, we love questions. We love talking. We love listening too. We like getting to know you and your interests. It, it's actually something that we will do once we know who the, the class is for the coming year and who it is admitted and accepts at Ford. Uh, we send out a survey over the summer and we will ask you what you know at this point about your career interests and the organizations that might be of interest to you. Uh, and that becomes a basis for our um, employee outreach yep. all right i see a question casey unmute ask away thank you um so i i actually am hoping to start the program um part-time as, as i work um i work uh at the u of m already as staff and um so i really the the bonnet fellowship seems very interesting but my question would be is that is there a restriction on when you have to apply for that? So like I wouldn't want to apply for it next year, but I would say in like two years or, or I, I think the it's going to take me about four years to complete the program. So could I in year three or four apply for that fellowship and, and still get it? I don't know the answer to that. We've okay. not had that question before, but <laughs> I would say that that is maybe a question to talk with Beth about. Uh, but in general, the students that have been the Bonnet Fellows have been full-time, often uh, dual degrees. And so there is this juggling with another program, um, but we have not had somebody who's been juggling with full-time work. Doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Yeah. But we, we just haven't encountered it yet. 
All right, and other questions. I'll just add to that, that we have a number of students that will work for the city of Detroit uh, outside of the fellowship too, whether that's for part-time during the school year or for the, the summer internship component for the MPP degree as well. But yeah, other, other questions? All right. Well, so can I can I pose a question, to you guys, Jennifer? Yes, Peter? please. Um, so you know, a lot of that, uh, you know, Bonet and Reeker is more domestically focused. But I'm wondering if you guys can talk. I mean, we definitely have a lot of students that are interested in international work and international opportunities. So wondering, and obviously that's been a little different, difficult during the pandemic. But just wondering if you could highlight a few sort of, you know, places that we have really great relationships with. Because I know we have students that that go all over the world. Yeah, and actually someone just dropped that. Maya just dropped that same question right in the chat. So um, yeah, certainly we have developed lots of opportunities abroad. It, the last two years have been challenging in terms of uh, the you know, in terms of travel, right? So where we have worked with our employers is to still offer those positions, but to do it in a way that's remote. Obviously it's not ideal. It's not really what students mean when they say, I wanna do an international internship, but it is still international policy focused in its connection to those organizations. So for instance, uh, for the past two summers, we've had somebody work for the International Organization of Migration uh, out connected to the Costa Rica country office. Um, but that student has been in the US, not traveled there. This year that could open up and it, it, and it could be possible that they're traveling. So, um, you know, we've had folks at the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, I just learned yesterday about an alum who took a job at UNICEF that I am already on him about, uh, what do you think about internship possibilities this summer? Uh, and, and it, certainly students have found positions at the World Bank. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I do a program on individually developing your internship. Obviously there are lots of resources that we make available, uh, but uh, I find that a lot of the best internships are ones where students develop it on their own because they have a very niche interest. You know, I wanna work on water and sanitation and I wanna be in Francophone Africa. Well, chances are we're not gonna have an internship that specific. Um, because it's not going to be as like it's not as widely of interest to the, the larger audience of students. But working with you one on one to help you develop a strategy to create that internship by reaching out to the organization uh, is it's really super fun. And we actually have a template um, that has worked numerous times where students have have adapted the template, emailed it to. Uh, you know, a UN office in, in Bangkok, Thailand, and within hours got a response saying, we would love to talk with you about the possibility of an internship. So, you know, you can take a path of least resistance of relying on our resources, which are great, right? I don't want to diss them. But if there's something that you really want to do that is, you'll hear me talk about that's in the bullseye uh, of your career interests, then sometimes that means you're gonna you're gonna want to create it yourself to get all of the different pieces uh, lined up as best as possible. Yeah, and then another question about uh, international students uh, at Ford and completing internships. And uh, yes, our, our Ford School international students complete internships domestically in the United States. Uh, they'll complete them abroad in their home country. It really just depends on what their interests are. Um, but at the, yeah, the internship level, there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, it depends on what visa you might be on um, in terms of the ability to complete an internship. But we have a number of international students that do. Uh, and that that is with nonprofits, with private sector organizations, uh, also you know, local state government, uh, there are any international organizations, any number of opportunities uh, for our international students. We do acknowledge there are some companies that will put restrictions um, on there. So there are some barriers uh, that they will not hire 
international students at the internship or full-time level. Um, and that is a, a choice that they are making that we disagree with, um, but it's, it's a choice that they are making. But a number of international students are finding very uh, exciting opportunities that align with their goals um, for summer internships as well. And the same would be true. Federal government in general is um, is not going to be a, a path for international yeah. students, but but all other sectors are. Yeah. And then certainly yeah. students have also wanted uh, third country experiences. Yep. That again, a little bit lower than in recent years because of the pandemic. Right. Yeah. So professional development funds. So this is. Um, a pool of funds that are available uh, for students that want to develop a skill. And this year we actually expanded it to a leadership competency. Uh, you can request up to $500 in support for something that isn't already available on campus and not just a networking, like because there are plenty of networking opportunities, like it needs to be something unique. Um, I would say in general, students have often used them for conferences or for workshops where uh, there is a, a new skill being developed. Um, and and I, it's been underutilized, obviously, because of the pandemic. Lots of things on Zoom have not had a cost, um, but we have had students that have used and accessed those resources to just expand on what is available to you. Um, I think a big, a couple of years ago, a big one was case competitions that were led by other schools and students needed to travel, say, to, to Chicago or to uh, upstate New York, and um, they requested support from the Professional Development Fund, and that was a great opportunity. I think of other um, experiences where it's been an interactive experience to develop uh, some sort of policy training not offered at U of M that students have have done as well um, or presenting at some sort of conference. Presenting at a conference for sure. Yeah. And there are other funds at the university available for that as well. Questions? Have we answered everything? You guys are just so good. <laughs> Hey, we try and be comprehensive, but honestly, it, the more we know about you and your interests, like we will say this over and over again, but it's true. The more we know about you and your interests, the more we can assist you. Yes, Liz, go for it. Is that a, a hand up, Liz? No. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It was my machine. <laughs> I thought your hand was up, but it was my cursor. Um, okay. So I had another thought I wanted to share. The more we know about you, and I, so let me give you an example. A student was in the office just the other day and talking about they want to do health policy and they want to be in Sacramento. And um, so, you know, we had a good conversation. I, I suggested a couple of, of organizations and alums they might want to have conversations with. And as soon as they left the office, I'm not kidding you, I got an email about an internship in a health policy organization in Sacramento, right? So I just forwarded it right to the student. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is serendipitous. This may be exactly what you're looking for. Obviously I shared it with other students as well through our online system, but um, you know, it's like knowing what you are interested in helps us help you. Any other thoughts or questions folks have? Mary, you're muted. Thanks, Can sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, I appreciate all the information that you've shared. I'm wondering if students often um, become involved with the Michigan League for Public Policy or other state priority partnership groups that kind of focus on fiscal policy? Yeah, the okay. short, answer, short answer is yes. Um, the the follow-up answer is uh, yes. And which of those do you want to get involved in? Uh, so we've had students work with MLPP uh, through our program and practical policy engagement, um, through like a practical learning project. 
uh, or um, some of those organizations through our strategic public policy consulting class, or um, just doing, or not just doing, but doing some sort of part-time uh, research or internship experience during the school year. So yeah, so you mentioned budget and we've had, there's a lot of different budget policy um, opportunities for sure here at Ford. Uh, you might work closely with our close up or the Center for Local uh, State and Urban Policy uh, here at the Ford School, one of our research centers. Uh, and the, I have a, a meeting tomorrow about a number of different Michigan uh, state policy organizations looking to connect with our students. Uh, so, so yes. Absolutely. We have a lot of alums at OMB, the yeah. Office of Management and Budget, uh, the White House Budget Office, um, City of Detroit Budget Office. Yep. So certainly um, experiences on the fiscal side, um, you know, California Legislative Analyst Office, it's a lot of fiscal analyst work. Uh, and then on the monetary policy side, certainly connections with the Federal Reserve uh, Board, uh, as well as uh, the, some of the regional banks. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, lots of interesting organizations and employers. Other, other questions? So we talked about, oh, Casey, was that a question? Okay, go for it. We can unmute you, yep. So um, I had a question I, about the MPA program versus the MPP program. Um, and I, I feel like I, um, maybe this is just an imposter syndrome kicking in, but I feel like even though I'm applying for the MPA program, I feel like I would benefit from a lot of the uh, kind of leadership support and, and educational things that come with the internship associated with the MPP program. Mm -hmm. So if you guys could talk about ways that MPA, just clarify, sure. um, that interaction or yeah so the M the mpa program is really designed for mid-career folks that have several years of work experience um and and is definitely a little bit more conducive to um people that are staying in their jobs and wanting to do it on a slower track the the leadership coaching is very much still a part of that the the summer strengths assessment, which is part of our leadership initiative, that's all open to MPAs as well. Um, you still have access to the coaching and all the policy talks. And the capstone is not really an equivalent to an internship, um, but it is an applied experience where it's kind of the summation of your year in the program where you work with a client on a project it's more of a research project um, that you'll, you'll identify with an organization. And we encourage people to use those very strategically to position yourself for the kind of work you may wanna be doing next. Um, and so there is a lot of support. Liz Gerber right now is the faculty member who is leading out the Capstone um, course for the MPAs uh, and, and we work really closely with her. Um, she's, she's incorporating strengths into the capstone class. I'll be doing some career related work in the capstone class around um, your pitch. Um, and, and we'll be doing a panel of MPAs that use the, the degree to, to um, reposition themselves in some different ways in their career. So it's, we're very much invested in the leadership dimensions of that program as well. I think that where you would lose out, well, one is it's a longer program to do the MPP. Um, it, and it tends to be a little bit more early in career and you do lose out that summer internship experience. But if you're working, like if you're working full time, you may not need or want that. But you know, that's a question that, that we can, Beth or I can talk with you about. So on the MPA side, for those of you that are thinking about that program, the way we structured it uh, beginning this year is that I work with all the MPAs as your career coach um, because it really feeds into how much I know about you, helps me to uh, best match you with a leadership coach based on the, the conversations that we have and the things that you identify as where is your growing edge. 
um, in your own leadership development. Um, that doesn't mean you can't use the services uh, and, and participate in everything GCS does. You absolutely can. But at least initially, I want to uh, I meet with all of the MPAs. And I work with the MPPs as well, but um, that is, that's just a, one of the ways that we've structured it this year, and it seems to be working really well. Thank you very much. So I'm happy to touch base if you if you want to talk about your specific situation. Just sure. shoot me shoot me an email. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Yep. So I do see another question, Peter. You want to take that one around examples of environmental organizations for yeah. uh, student interns? Yeah. Uh, so we've got a, a number of different uh, options there. So thanks for the question, Aaron. Uh, but recently, you know, we've had students directly go and work for the EPA. I actually have another uh, meeting with a, one of the offices in DC on Monday. Um, so actually one of those is working with an alum of the Ford School. And then they've made those interns have made such an impact that there are other units within the EPA that now want to have Ford School interns. Um, so EPA, uh, the governor's office here in Michigan, the executive office of policy, um, focused on environmental policy leads for the state. Uh, we've had students intern there, the Michigan Environmental Council, uh, Eagle or Environment, Great Lakes and Energy uh, within the state of Michigan is uh, another example too. Uh, we've had students that have gone on to work on the Hill, um, specifically focused on some environmental issues. Um, students that have worked in DC at think tanks focused on uh, different environmental issues. Uh, and then also the environmental uh, consulting space. We've had a number of students kind of go on to different firms um, as well to, to work in that environmental policy. Uh, and then a, a number of other nonprofits. Um, so I think the question would be, uh, you know, Aaron, where and how do you want to work uh, in environmental policy? The um, EDF Climate Corps, we've had students complete that internship um, fellowship recently too. Um, partnering with nonprofits. I think the, the most recent example for that, they were over at Sustainable New Jersey, um, working just outside of New York City. Uh, so a number of different uh, environmental policy opportunities. And a, a number of our students will also be involved in environmental policy um, at U of M, where there's a number of different collaborative opportunities uh, to work with our School of Environment and Sustainability too. Uh, so a lot of uh, options depending on the interests. And at the, the MPA level too, we've had environmental policy. One of our alums is you know, now the chief sustainability and resilience officer for uh, a major city in the US. Um, so that, yeah, their environmental policy is definitely top of mind right now. Yep. Any, other questions for the group? I don't see any. I just want to say that the, the support side of our office, hopefully you felt a little bit of that through all that we do. Um, and you know what? There's a support that we just provide in the highs and lows of a job search. Yeah. There, will be, there will be jobs that you are a finalist for and you don't get. And we are there to help you um, vent and help you redirect and um, you know, acknowledge how difficult those can be. And we're there to support you as you negotiate salaries and make difficult decisions between offers. Uh, and just to be a sounding board as you balance the multiple factors. You know, career decisions do not happen in a vacuum. There are multiple factors, family dynamics, commitments, responsibilities that we have that impact on our um, geographic mobility, that impact on um, some of the choices. And, and that's why we are, where every story is different, right? There, there are no two students whose career path is identical um, because we all bring identities and, and backstories and um, preferences to our work and to who we are and to the impact that you wanna make in the world. So we hope that you um, complete your application to the Ford School and that we will see many of you here in the fall in person. Fingers crossed that we stay the course on all of that. Um, and I guess we'll turn it over, back over to Beth now, but thank you all, great questions. Thank you, thanks for joining yeah. us.
Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Peter. This is all really helpful. Hopefully um, you all got a chance to sort of hear the great supports that are provided by our Graduate Career Services Office. And I'm confident that they would be happy to answer any follow-up questions if you have them. So just wanted to remind you again that the last webinar in this series is going to be on January 6th with our Dean Michael Barr. Um, so if you're able to join us for that, that would be terrific. Um, a quick reminder that the application deadline is January 15th. So uh, thank you so much again for coming and uh, have a good afternoon. Thanks.